Delaware today. Walt Thiessen and life coach Joel Elston here. Today is Thursday, March the 28th, 2019. It's 8 a.m. in New York. It's 5 a.m. in Los Angeles. It's 12 noon in London. It's Sydney, Australia. It's, I believe, around 11 p.m. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And I'm happy that Joel is back with me doing another sh- episode. I, I was trying to count it up in my, on my fingers and toes, Joel. I think this is our fifth year doing the show together. I could be wrong, but I think it's fifth year. I I will always defer to your obsessive compulsive counting technique. So I, uh, <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I, no problem. It, 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 it feels like you're. you're I, in fact, I would almost guarantee you're right. So I, go I think it's the first time I've ever been told that it was OCD. That's interesting. Okay, well, that's cool. <laughs> it was, it was the show, so you, you know, but. <laughs> But you certainly are detail-oriented. That we can agree on. Well, I, I can say there is one way that I am obsessive. I, I like doing 10 podcasts a week. By most people's standards, I, most people do a, a podcast, they do it once a week. That's what you and I used to do. Exactly. You know, I'm, yeah. up to, I'm up to 10 now, so you know, that probably is at least one point you know, in, in the DSM about you know, being OCD, I don't think. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. I, in fact, I, I I would think somewhere in that spectrum. But I, it, it's a bigger thing. And it's funny you say that OCD. The moment you say something like that, that's a clinical diagnosis that actually is an overused in descriptives of people. But is it really the general term? Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people say, "Oh, I'm OCD." Well, you're not technically OCD, uh-huh. but you you do have areas of focus. And what I do love is is I look at OCD again when you have what most people think of it, it can be, as with anything, a great asset when you understand how to use it. It's, it's a, a, being able to have a hyper-focus, usually surrounding things that you really enjoy. And you know, I, I have people that are quantum mechanics, quantum you know, physics, that are just, they, they can discuss to you, you know, string theory on a level that you're like, I don't even, I don't even understand the words you're using. <laughs> and they're just really into that. You know? And so yeah. I admire the fact that, that you have that type of, you know, I have my stuff too. I'm in the gym. I go to the gym every day of my life. And people go, oh, you're not supposed to go that much. And I go, I'm sorry. I just do. It's <laughs> you just broke my, the law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's, it's of all the things I've sort of uh, uh, have done repetitively in my life, that's the one. I haven't gone to jail for the gym yet. So, <laughs> <I know>. um <laughs> Oh, geez. that's funny. It's an interesting point that you're making, though, because, uh, well, you've actually pursued a PhD, so you know what kind of intense attention of detail is required there. And that's actually a great big benefit if you want to become a doctor of whatever, philosophy or medicine or anything else, because there is so much you have to learn, so much you have to absorb, so much you have to be able to spit back on the exams and to the committees and so forth. So I, I would think that would be a benefit for that as well. Well, and, and, and yeah, when you're when you're dealing in my version of focus is is if it's something that I'm super interested in, like metaphysics, where my doctorate is in, uh, you know, I, I love the concept, which is the, is a bigger category, which the law of attraction falls under. Uh, it, it I, I'm fascinated by that, so I, I can I can spend all my I can spend hours a evening studying and looking at the different things and hearing the different points of view. Uh, I, I love that. It's a great thing. Whereas if I were going to get a uh, a doctorate in anthropology or something, blah, 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 mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're like, I, I, I can't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's just, you know, it, it makes no sense. I, I, I wouldn't be able to uh, uh, have that energy or focus to do that. It's just the way it is. I, I'm not interested enough in it. Um, I, I was talking to someone today who's a, a finishing up medical school, mm-hmm. and he's considering going into psychiatry. And but the medical school, it, it, it's, it talks about the ultimate in memorization and what you have to, to know. Ninety percent of what you learn in medical school will never be in your field. It's just an overall right. general knowledge. And, right. and and while that that served well years ago, I think it's going to be a change in that where since so much information is available at your fingertips now, you don't need to know, you know, the, the, within the thumb, there's, there's like nine bones within each thumb in the name of each bone, <laughs> and, and it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, all that's irrelevant when, when you could be focusing more on, you know, like, like 
like the, the new way of thinking. I'm talking about gut health. I was just having a big conversation about that uh, with a doctor yesterday. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of information about good, healthy gut and good mental health. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's massive right now. It's the biggest trend in psychiatry. And this is a psychiatrist for 30 years in, in the field, and he, he, he just didn't believe me at first. <laughs> He's like, he said, Joel, are you making this up? I go, no, how do you not know this? And, and, and he, he yeah, so this is it, and so it, he he just hasn't done any follow up. He, he, he just he, he's any any he, he's just all excited about these whole new concepts. So mm-hmm. We we talked about that. So, but this is a guy that he, he's he's a genius. He's an expert in his field and what aware of the biggest trend towards things. So wow. the idea that always having that thirst and so that, for lack of a better term, CD or a, the ability to hyper focus on stuff you love. Uh, it, it is how people become experts in fields and, and, and learning things. And never, you know, never ever wanting to not be learning. That's so awesome to me. Always want to be learning. It occurs to me that there are probably some med students right now who perhaps could be listening to the program and saying, geez, I hope they can get rid of organic chemistry. I'd really like to get that off the curriculum. <laughs> Because that's always the pain of the, of the, the medical students, having to memorize all that stuff that they have to memorize. It's so so dry and so boring. <laughs> yeah, and, and one of the classes that he was required to do, and I don't know if every medical student does it, but so much of medicine is based on study. Mm-hmm. But he had to take advanced statistics yeah. um, to understand how. And, 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 and he's going, oh, my gosh, you, you, we, we spent this. And, Again, these, there's nobody doing this. It's stupid in medical school. So you have some bright people, but not every area is their area. And he right. struggled so much with advanced statistics, and 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 you know there needs to be an understanding how they derive these these uh, you know, studies and how they come up with the thing. But the fact that do you really need a, a basically a, a master's in advanced statistics, or, mm. or or could you just say, yeah, I, I, I need the general stuff? You yeah, know? right. right. Uh, but, but it is a, it, it's a fascinating world, and, and all this can, it, it, a, your gift can be your curse, or your you know it, either way. It's, we have things that we have that are unique to us. Is how we use them that determine if they positive, or negative. That's that's where the law of attraction comes in. You can look at your skill set. Uh, I'm on a big crusade for years now, especially with children. And I have me having ADHD myself. Of you know the the idea that you know. It's in the well. Here, it's it's a mental disability or it's a, whatever term they have it under now. I don't know exactly where it is, but mm-hmm. whatever classification it is. It, no, it, it. I just think it's a different brain. It's not. It's not a less superior brain. Mm-hmm. It it just works differently. And and you, you're telling kids, for, you know, well, you have a special need because you're you're ADHD. I'm like, no, you have a super brain. You, nobody's taught you how to use it. And. It's just a different perspective of how to look at it. And I think with everything, you know, you look at, at the the guy. He's not a great example because he murdered his wife, but the, the Blade Runner guy. Oh, yeah, know, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So forget the murdering the wife part. But, Please do. Uh, <laughs> he, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll just sort of leave that. <laughs> right. But, you know, this is a guy that, and I, I don't even know how he lost his legs or anymore, but, but he, because of what he did with his, Disability. I mean, he actually was the first person that he ran faster than people with traditional with non prosthetic legs. Right. He he took that to another level. He said, "Well, he has an unfair advantage now." <laughs> so, well, but he, he, and so I mean, that's really a, a positive that that you know. Again, we get into the whole life thing, so it takes a lot of that away. But uh, Lance Armstrong, another sort of divisive character, mm-hmm. uh, but. You read his story, and again, leaving the last chapter out, uh, what, a, what a motivational guy. He, he just went in, and, and, and you know, he, he had cancer. And, and so cancer actually made him work harder uh, and fought harder. So, I mean, we, it, it's, it's how we view everything, and that's sort of the concept we were talking about last week or in almost every week in some form or fashion, is our perspective that determines where we're going with it, I, how I look, how I choose to look at it. Right. And that's why our law of attraction is such a great gift to have or our biggest curse because we just don't realize uh, oh, how much power it has a lot of times. Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, in fact, really what you're talking about, it occurred to me, uh, you mentioned, you, you told a little story there about how when you are at home and you're just 
spending the stuff that you love, you can just spend hours and hours on it. But, but if it's stuff that you don't really love that much, you, you just can't pay attention to it. And, and we were telling, talking about medical students and so forth having the same thing. That's really what it comes down to. Do you love something? If you love something, you can just keep doing it endlessly. If you don't love it, if yeah. you really dislike it, you, you, it's probably like eating beets for most people. It's just not, no, thank you, not interested. <laughs> you know, right. it, love it, is exactly. what drives it. Yeah, you're sure. Well, I, I know I, I have these. Years ago, I met this young man, um, and I forget even he was, I don't know, it's been years ago. I don't even remember the environment I met him, but I was a young man I was working with, and he was, I don't know, 12, 11 or 12. Uh-huh. And he had this unique obsession with vacuum cleaners. Oh, okay. Don't understand it, never understood it. Uh, uh, it, it, it made absolutely uh, no sense. Our cats Absolutely. actually have, a, have an obsession with vacuum cleaners, too. They like to run away from them while they're operating. So it's kind of an inverse <laughs> <time, yeah. laughs> So and at the time, and, and I'm sure he's a grown man now, I haven't followed up recently, but at, you know, years, he would be able to, that's all he wanted to talk about. And, and his friends or you know, other 12 years like, Lord, just shut up. What are you talking about? <laughs> and, and he could tell you about every vacuum, the quality, the, 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 the ratings, you know, where they came from. I mean, the most extensive knowledge of vacuum cleaners I've ever seen. Was so, his last name uh, Dyson? Is that, is that who he was? <laughs> no, it should have been. <laughs> yeah, right. and, and I've always wanted to, this is before the Dyson stuff was big. I always wanted to talk to him after that, by the way. So I uh-huh. to talk about the Dyson. Uh, but, but at the end of the day, we're, we're all, we're, everything came down to it. We had a, uh, he eventually went to all things. He went to work for this company that was selling vacuums, and and he he actually was doing very well. He was so passionate about vacuum cleaners, uh-huh. and you know it, it's one of those careers that most people would dread doing. But he'd get up every day just loving the fact that vacuum cleaner was his life. I have no <laughs> idea what behind all that, uh, and it, it does. But, but but it was one of those very narrow windows of focus. Yeah. That he struggled in the areas of school, but it, when it came to vacuum cleaners, there was just, I, I don't know the human that would have more knowledge than him. Crazy. And uh, that was such a, a unique thing, but he eventually made it work for him. Do you see the day coming? I, I kind of hope for it, but do you see the day coming where people in general become less and less uh, obsessed? I'm talking about OCD, less obsessed about credentials and getting the right training for stuff and oh, you have to have the general training and all that and being more oriented toward people just pursuing what they love and recognizing that when they love it, they're good at it and that's all you really need to know. Do you, do you think that's going to happen? I, I hope for it. I keep you know, I keep imagining a world like that. I think it would be such a much more pleasurable and enjoyable world for everybody concerned, but then again, I also look at what goes on with how much desire there are for credentials. People are People crave working with other people who have credentials, and, and it's almost like the credentials get in the way. Now, maybe that's just my perspective. Maybe that's just my obsession. Oh, I completely agree. I completely agree. And and, and, and here here's my sort of my take on that. You know, the, the idea that I, I'm seeing it, and believe it or not, technology is sort of leading the way. Um, there are a lot of people that are realizing, look, I can go to a technical school. I can – a specialty in internet protocol or security, and I'm making up words. So, uh, actually, internet uh, protocol is internet. We, we use internet protocol every day. It's called the internet. How, you, how the machines connect. It's called IP, internet protocol. Oh, what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. I sub- it's like I, I, I act like I, I say things, and I'm really glad I know what I'm talking about. You, you really do, even you if you do. don't. <laughs> yeah. So, but you're, you're seeing a trend where people can go directly, you know, bypass. You get out of high school and then you go directly and learn your field. Uh, you get certifications in the field. I know, I know uh, a lot of, even in the medical field, I'm seeing this where people are getting out of high school and then say they want to be a radiology technician. Mm-hmm. They can go right to that. Right. So instead of eight years of school, you can become a radiology technician at 18 months and at, at, at 19 and a half years of age, technically. You could be making, you know, thirty-five dollars an hour right. in a hospital, and eventually work your way up to making, you know, a, a, a wage that's in the upper ten percent of wages. You mm-hmm. know, it, it's just, uh, it, and you can get additional center. Uh, I know surgical techs that have 
nothing to surgical tech training. They went out of high school, went to surgical tech. They have sort of eventually hook up with a, a doctor, a certain doctor, and they become a, sort of a team. And I know surgical techs that make $250,000 a year doing three surgeries a week. Wow. And it, 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 it's just, it's really uh, sort of the wave, wave of the future. I hope we could do that because understanding that the, the generalized credentials years ago, they meant something. They really did. They, they really, they, they could mark an expertise because you sort of need to cover everything. But now we have so much access to information that anybody on you know, on the street knows is, uh, that could have access to uh, Google and WebMD. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but they could, they know more than any, any medical doctor did in 1960. They know more. Right now, by, by having access to it. Yeah. Knowledge is power, as they say. And that's absolutely true. Yeah. So, yeah, well, maybe you're right. Maybe that is what's going to happen. Maybe this uh, technological drive is going to create more of what I was hoping was going to happen. Um, of course, now, also the other part of it, which is it's great if you know what you love. But And, and this is a big theme from yeah. my life. If you don't know what you love, for, for years and years, I didn't know what I loved. And then even when I found something, I couldn't figure out any way to make money off it, to actually earn a living doing it. Because uh, you mentioned an X-ray tech. I, I never had any interest in being an X-ray tech. Um, I, I had a friend who became a respiratory therapist. He's been very successful as a result all his life. Um, but I, it was something I, I just didn't have any interest in, it, you know. And, and all, it seemed to me like all of the, the career paths that would actually be, you know, career paths that would create good income for you were paths I didn't care about. And I thought, like, is there something wrong with me? You know, is it, am I broken? <laughs> am I like a failure of a human being because I can't find a love for something that uh, you know, is something that people need a lot and are willing to pay good money for? It, it, it's, it's almost debilitating to not know what you love. Now, eventually, I have found something right. that I love. I love doing these podcasts, and that's to me, this is like a lot of fun. I just I do 10 of them a week. I mean, obviously, I can't get enough of them, right? And yet, I'm not making any money. I'm not making any income off of them. You know, uh, it's not uh, filling my pockets. It's not paying the bills. Um, that I'm sure I'm not the only person who has that experience. I'm sure there are other people who have found something that they like, but they can't seem to find a career path for it. I mean, I, I, I'm not even sure where my question is. I guess my question is, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do when you're in that place? Well, and, and I, I think a lot of it, there's a lot of factors at play, and, and I, I you know, try to point you. Know, imagine, um, let's see, uh, uh, who's, who's a great baseball player? You, I'll talk about your A current one? Uh, how about Bryce one? Harper? Yeah, Bryce, current one. Bryce Harper just Bryce signed Harper, a contract. Yeah, he, Okay, so Bryce Harper, uh, the perfect timing. Uh, uh, he he's a star. He he's great at what he does. And I did read that he signed almost a half a billion dollar contract, guaranteed incredible money. Yeah, it's not part uh, of it. Yeah, but Mike Mike Trout actually almost signed a half a billion. He was about four hundred seventy billion. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. So, so these these guys, they're great talent at baseball. Plus the timing of their talent at this time in in history, right? Baseball is important. Baseball. So the moving parts here. Now go back a hundred years ago. If Bryce Harper would have been born a hundred years ago, <laughs> his skill set would have translated. I mean, it, it, it's like okay, they they may have had baseball back then, but it certainly you know maybe you made twenty dollars a, a month, and you know because of the game, I mean, it wouldn't be anything of any consequence, right? Time. But. But a lot of this is an ongoing. How do you time what you love? Mm -hmm. With like my my love of metaphysics, my love of of law of attraction. I I have re told the story so many times. The audience is probably really bored of it. Of how when I was twelve years old, I was searching for something, and what I was being taught in a spiritual way didn't seem to make sense. But I had no access to anything. Well. You know, I was in a small town, you know, Southern Baptist town, that, that you couldn't find anything in the library that didn't match the belief system of the town. So I didn't know where to go, and I felt there was something out there. Now, it was years ago when you know everything became available to us, and I started making these discoveries, and I could do a lot of research on. But my love of the law of attraction, I I don't know that if I were if I were born 20 years before I was born. I probably never would have run across this the way I ran across. Yeah. So 
it, a, a lot of your passion is timing, and how do you translate that into where we're at today? Like you, mm-hmm. you know, with, with, uh, and you are very knowledgeable on web development and, mm-hmm. and web pages and all that. Well, ten years ago, that was a super lucrative business. It yeah. was like people were lining up to get with. Now it's dead. You can go on <laughs> Wix dot com and do one for free. That, yeah. that would have been a state of the art website ten years ago. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it, it, the, the timing of you know, my dad used to sell insurance, and before the internet came along, he was selling insurance, and it, our average commission on a homeowner's policy was twenty percent. So, if you sold wow. a five hundred dollar uh, homeowner's policy, you, know, you, you get a hundred dollars in commission. Well, today that same policy may be one percent, right? Because the competition, you don't need an agent; you can do everything online. So, the competition now. And so it's a different world. It's a different industry. Exactly. It has a different, you know, way to it. And so, learning to match and grow your skill set instead of get stuck on that—that that is the challenge. How, how does this evolve for you? But now you, like you said, you found it with a podcast. And I do believe. I've always believed it, 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 it's it's the timing of it is something that we we're working on, mm-hmm. but. The podcast, I'm, I'm reading the other day where these random podcasts that are not much more successful than ours are being bought. Yeah, oh, yeah, there was it, a it, huge, huge purchase made by uh, Spotify. They bought a company right. called, uh, what was it called? I can't think of what it was called, but it was a company that was founded by a guy who used to work for um, for PBS or PBS or right. NPR, I can't remember whether it was television or radio, and it was a program called This American Life. He was one of the producers of that program, and he ended up going off on his own and founding a podcast company about four years ago, something like that. And this company, all it does is create fiction podcasts. That's all they do, and they've got like I don't know, thirty, forty, fifty different uh, series that they've they've strung together. And that company just sold all of its uh, inventory to Spotify for. I think it was two hundred and thirty million dollars. A whole bunch of people around the industry are raising their eyebrows, saying, "What the hell is wrong with Spotify?" <laughs> right, right, and, 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 and that's the piece that that a lot of people just don't grasp is you, you can get you can get there. If all it, if, if we were affiliated or, or somebody runs across us, but you could be swept up in that. There, there's mm-hmm. Spotify, for example is looking for a lot of content. Podcasts are, are becoming way of the future. Yep. They are the future. We are in it right now. Um, very few people are tuning into news the way they did. Just like we're talking about in right. general, where your specifics are, uh, you know, whether you're, you, you want to pursue just what you love versus having to get general education, well, podcasts are sort of the – the entertainment news version of that. Mm-hmm. You have the ability to find topics you really like to focus on and program your 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 listening to that and not have to – if you turn on, you know, your your favorite uh, propaganda news channel, CNN or Fox, and you're you're given – first of all, you're given a spin to the direction of, you know, uh, you know it, it's either – Trump is a, you know, he, he may be Jesus, he may be the second coming of Jesus, we're not sure, or he may be Satan, <laughs> depending right. on which, which one you turn into. But, but then you get to hear, you get to hear the news, quote unquote, news of the day from their spin versus going to a podcast and saying, well, I like what they're saying, I like that. Then one of the podcasts that ended up getting a few million dollars, it was a father and son that basically started a podcast, it was like a mystery podcast theater kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They, all they were doing was reading, you know, taking uh, uh, classics, histories, and reading them on air oh my. over the year. And, you know, with, and, 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 and so you're, you're thinking, well, that's sort of simple, you know, but and they'd say this is, you know, the, uh, the murder of the Orient Express, and they would mm-hmm. read it, they would do it in play form, the characters. sort of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, and had a sort of a, a few people help it out, and wow, and, and they're, it, it's just content they're after. So you get there's ten year old kids that are doing what they call toy reviews. They're making ten thousand dollars a month on YouTube. Yeah, oh yeah, it it's an amazing time. So you look at what's out there versus what's missing, and our focus is it's like you know we we get stuck on what isn't there, 
and versus what is there, and how does our skill set match where we're going? And that's that's the key. The timing is a bunch of moving parts. You know, like like my life coaching model that I do, uh, and and you know, I have a very good client base, and I have a lot of referrals. I have more and more doctors, you know, referring to me. Well, that would have never happened ten years ago. Ten years ago, it was still like, oh, I don't understand this model. Well, right now, I'm having. You know, so many people like to say, well, I, not only is it maybe equal to traditional psychotherapy, while it is a very different thing, a lot of people say this may be better for certain people than traditional psychotherapy. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's catching on with a concept, not just with me, but other people realizing, wow, this is a different way to do it. And it, it may be we're not, the other way hasn't always been the best. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. Well, and actually, you, you made an illusion a few minutes ago. You talked about uh, baseball 100 years ago compared to baseball today. Well, today, the average baseball player in the major leagues makes about $4.5 million a year, just the average player, not the superstars. They make $4.5 million a year on average. 100 years ago was 1919, which even not baseball fans may recognize. That was the year of the so-called Black Sox scandal when Sheila's Joe Jackson and some of the other members of the Chicago White Sox threw the World Series because they were being paid by a a gambling mobster to throw the series because they weren't making any money. Like you said, they, they were making twenty dollars a month. So people so they actually turned although there's there's some controversy about whether Jackson actually threw the series because he had an amazing series. But you know, that's a side issue. The main issue is there were these players who felt like they all they could do, the only thing that was left to them in order to do their passion was to commit a crime and to, and to cheat people. And, and I often wonder, you know, like how many other people in other fields end up feeling the same thing? I mean, I, I can't say I, I've never been tempted. I have felt tempted. There's always a piece of me that says, no, I'm not going down that road. But, you know, you start feeling desperate because you can't make it in the thing that you love. That that can really take a toll on you. Now, by the same token, you talked just a moment ago brilliantly about, you know, how you're in your own field, your own field has shifted and it has led to an opportunity that you, you kind of have risen the, ridden the crest of the wave in. Um, it reminds me of an article that I saw just yesterday online, story of a 19-year-old woman from Great Britain, I believe, who stumbled upon a business idea when she and her family traveled to China. While they were in China, um, they met this one particular family, and the, the, mother, the woman had just given birth to a child. Apparently in China, uh, it, it, it's even more than a tradition. It's just like a common thing now. They will give all their they will give their children a traditional Chinese name that has very spe- specific meaning and so forth, very meaningful for the family. But they will also try to find an English name because they know that given the world that we live in, if they have an English name as well, they're going to be much more successful if they do anything that interacts with any other country. And this particular woman wasn't really sure what kind of name to pick. She didn't really know English names. So the 19-year-old came up with a name for her and, and you know, gave it some thought and did a little research. Said, Watch it. How, about, how about this name? The mother loved it. She thought that was great. And it occurred to the 19-year-old, this is something that a lot of people in China need. So she created a website. I think the website was something like Find a Name or something like that, findaname.com. It wasn't that. It was something similar to that. And she set up a little algorithm. She, she punched in a bunch of data, looked at like 4,000 different kinds of names that were English names, um, assigned certain meanings to them based on, you know, what the, the, the etymology of the name was or how they're, you know, typically used or who the famous people are and so forth. She came up with like nine or ten different categories. And it set up the, the website so that a user could punch in like four or five different characteristics they're looking for and it would spit back to them. Uh, a collection of names they could pick the name they liked, and and the cost for it was like seventy nine cents a, a a use every time that you used it. She's made half a million dollars doing that. <laughs> I know, is it crazy? I mean, stuff like that holy cow! <laughs> I mean, she's paid for a college education. <laughs> but, and, and there, there's and, and and that's how you know. So so within that, and what, one of the things that I really think that happens in the law of attraction that. Where I go with my path, and I, I espouse a lot of these beliefs, is, you know, I, I, I connect the law of attraction with the concept of the law of action, where going out, doing movement of some sort leads to stuff like that. When you when you run across something and people need something, and you're like, huh, huh, let me 
let me see how I can do that. And so, you know, she took something so simple and realized, you know, it, it, it's, I, I know when, when I have a, a dear friend who, uh, uh, he's a psychologist that, uh, he's of African American descent, or he doesn't like that term, but I don't mm-hmm. know what to say nowadays, but, yeah. uh, he, he, he says, uh, uh, one of the things he counsels people on, and there are a lot of studies for this, that, Traditionally, black-sounding names, these are his words, mm-hmm. don't get called back on resumes. Mm-hmm. They, they just don't. And he yeah. really encourages families to understand that. That uh, there, there's more, And it, it's a bias, and it's absolutely wrong, but they, you know, they, they've done studies where they send it the, basically the exact same resume mm-hmm. with experience and education, and one with a, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, Brandon Wilson the third, mm-hmm. uh, and and something more you know, sounding more in a traditionally African American sounding, and and they they don't the, the other one the 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 Brandon Wilson the third gets called back something like seventy five percent of the time, wow, and like ten percent comparatively, and and so again they're so understanding that, but that's a knowledge that has been developed, and he's able to to spread that. So so he's he's actually writing a book on that whole concept. And so that's just a tiny area of study and expertise that he's going to probably turn into a big field at some point. And, 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 and it's a great service. And, and just like this lady that did the name thing there, we, we find things that aren't working right. We find things that are out there. It's what I love about, you know, the Elon Musk company, Tesla. Mm-hmm. I mean, whether you like him or not, I love the way he thinks. I love the way. Uh, he, he's developing things. I love where he's going with everything. And he's thinking way outside the box. And, and traditionally, people say it can't be done. And he's just doing it. It's, yeah. it's pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. I think one of the most interesting and impressive product ideas, and it's actually turned into a product, that he's come up with has gotten the least amount of attention. But he's come up with these solar tiles that you can retile your roof of your house with. And it will power your entire home, which, which is like that's phenomenal. I mean, that, that's that's better than what solar panels can do, and it looks just like a normal roof. It, like holy cow! Well, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it is it is one of those things that uh, uh, you know one of the concepts that that we are are looking at with with you know all this Tesla's you know that they have a, a thing that. It's sort of like a, a battery pack for the house that can be used in conjunction with their solar panels. But mm-hmm. it, it's just this amazing way of thinking that, you know, he, I heard him talking today. He said, technically, if we all use the solar panels uh, and we all did this, uh, we would be in really good shape because you technically could, could instead of there being an electric company, if every home were installed with these solar panels and they were connected as, and for overflow, you've technically become your own infrastructure. Mm-hmm. That's right. Exactly right. You know? In fact, it occurs to me that there, yeah. there are a lot of people, and, and this is actually part of what kids are taught today um, in school, there are a lot of people who are obsessed with global warming and climate change and so forth. Uh, and interestingly enough, all of that is presented in the negative. Oh, this terrible thing is going to happen. Where the, the, the the earth is going to warm. Uh, there are going to be you know massive flooding. Uh, you know, entire industries are going to be, get destroyed. People are going to starve to death. There's not going to be enough water. All this other kind of stuff. That's the negative way of, of looking at what's going on. The positive way of looking at it is: look how much money we can save just by tiling everybody's roof with solar tiles. It's an entirely different right. way of looking at the, the the same basic issue. Just looking at it completely differently, but looking at it from a po- positive perspective. Once again, I ask, what sure, would happen absolutely. if we did that? If we if we shifted our mindset to the positive side, we, we would have an entire society of homes that are solar powered. <laughs> right, right, and, and 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 that that is one of the things that that you know you you when you can see how clear or what a great idea that would be. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it is such an amazing. Uh, we live in such an amazing world then. Yeah. And and but but when you look at, at it from a lack based perspective, where oh we no longer you know we we can't do this. It's sort of like the West Virginia coal mines. You know, it, it's they're they're holding on to they, they they even change the name. We have clean coal. There's no such thing as clean coal. <laughs> clean coal. It, yeah. It, 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 yeah. It, but but it's not built 
on a need for coal. It's built on a need for an economic model that was really necessary in the 1920s. Mm-hmm. It's not necessary now. Right. But it, it, it again, it, it's holding on to stuff that in, in, instead of evolving, there's a whole new economy out there. But half of our battle in today's society is fighting people clinging to the old economy because of the fear of growth and the fear of change. Uh, whereas I look at it as just limitless, exciting stuff. You know, at one point, Google made the announcement. Uh, now, they have their alternative motives, too. But Google said, "There's why don't we make a free, super-duper, high-speed uh, Internet connection for free to everybody in the country, mm-hmm. free Wi-Fi to everybody. Yeah. And the implications of that is you could you could literally run them through electrical lines. You could have Wi-Fi uh, emitters or signal things or around the country, up and down highways, in theory, never even needing a cellular tower. Mm-hmm. You know, you could you could have – well, of course, that's – I mean, think of the number of people that scares. You know, oh, yeah. Comcast goes from a super valuable company to having zero – uh, and, and, and Google's talking about providing free service to what people pay a hundred bucks a month for minimum, mm-hmm. and it, it's just such. A, and then the you know Verizon's like, oh no, no, we can't do that because we you know we get a hundred bucks a month for our service, and you take two hundred dollars a month and provide all this stuff for free. Uh, it, it's an amazing benefit, but yet we have people fighting all that. Oh yeah, uh, well, well, you know, and, and they're going to say they're, they're not just fighting it; they're actively working against it by saying things like, well, that would make Google a monopoly. And we all know how bad monopolies yeah. are, so we can't have that, you know, not realizing right. That, right. That, that there's a, a flaw in their theory, which is that the theory, now I understand where the theory comes from. The theory comes from, say, the, the 19th century when you'd have a company town. And in that company town, the only place that you could buy your groceries was at the company store. That was it. There were no other options. So in that monopolistic right. situation, it became almost prohibitive live you just couldn't do it so people equate that right. equate google being big with um uh you know the company store being owned by uh, uh the company that ran the town except that there's a problem with the right. theory the problem is there's not just one company <laughs> there are a whole bunch of them out there there are millions of companies out there and you know okay well, yeah, the, a company the, becomes the, big so, okay let's say they become big offering this free internet service everywhere and what's the fear? The fear is, oh, well, then once they get everybody uh, having this free service, then they're going to start jacking up the price. They're going to make it expensive for everybody else. And if that was the only game in town, that would be worth being afraid of. But here's the, cl- the catch. They're not the only game in town. <laughs> well, yeah, and, 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 and there's new co- – and, and they get the, the, the most valuable company in the world 20 years from now, we don't, we don't even know yeah. right now. We never heard of them. They're a startup. They're, they right. haven't even began. That's because right. that's the beauty of it. It used to take, you know, Coca-Cola took years to build, a century to build. Right now we have we have the ability to, you know, think of the companies that didn't exist in 2010 that are wild now. There's tons of them out there. Uh, Uber, where did Uber come from all of a sudden? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it, it's, it not only did it become a company, it just, it became an instantly recognizable name brand over seemingly overnight. To the point where uh, the Medallion taxi services are feeling threatened by it. They're trying to shut it down because it's threatening their revenue, kind of like the coal people, you know? Exactly, yeah. And, and it took a very simple simple concept of ride-sharing and it and, 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 and took out all the expense. They're the biggest, and, and you know, the, the, basically the biggest uh, uh transportation company in the world and they don't own a single car yeah, right. um, it, it's just they they have created this this incredible idea and, and there, there's going to be more of that so that, to me the beauty of is how you choose to perceive all of this stuff we live in great times or we live in horrible times mm-hmm. and that's what we're trying to work out here exactly yeah in fact i'm i'm reminded that through most of my adult life the great boogeyman has been Walmart because Walmart yes. drove so many mom and pop stores out of business. They drove Kmart out of business. They drove a whole bunch of these other stores out of business. Now Walmart's future is threatened by another company called Amazon. Yeah. I mean, Walmart, yeah. and people it, don't realize it yet, but Walmart in the long run is in serious trouble. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it changes that. And Amazon comes along and does it well. And then, but then Costco, who's a really good model, is is working hard. Their their rate of growing their internet stuff mm-hmm. and 
And, you know, so uh, Walmart then is rising to the challenge. They're increasing their other, their services. You know, Walmart, while they have a disadvantage to Amazon, they have an advantage to have hubs all over the place. Yeah. So there's a uh, – Walmart has a long-term model of, of with all the stores, they can out – Amazon, Amazon, because they, if have they really want stores. to. Yeah, yeah, they, they really they could take, and this is the model they're probably going to go to. They could take half of their retail stores and convert them into the warehouse model that Amazon uses and have local Amazon things, and they could go down to thirty minute same day delivery, uh, and, and, could, and and not have to, and use it. They could be Amazon of their own game. They could. It's it, it's, and and so. So within that, this is what it does. But when you look at it, when you look at it from a fear base, you lose things to the, the fear. When you look at it from a growth base, right. and you get the you, you get the growth mindset, and the com- if a company can approach it from that growth mindset, look at the endless possibility. This week, uh, I, I, funny we talked about this. I, I want to throw a crazy number out there. It, it doesn't matter, but it's something like. 5,000 or 20,000, somewhere, a, a huge amount of retail stores, Pele Shoes, uh, totally shut down their operations. Mm-hmm. Um, all these stores are closed, Dollar Tree, all, because it, it, the need's not there. You you right. you don't need to go to a store. I, I, I have stuff being delivered every day now. I, I very seldom go to a store. However, I still need, I like that option if it's available, mm-hmm. but you don't need so many of them. So it, it, it's a changing economy, and by it, is it either a, a yes? There's jobs lost on, you know, the the, the ten dollar an hour, the seven or eight dollar an hour job at Dollar Tree at the cashier. Yes, that job is lost. Mm-hmm. But there's there also you you hear these other companies that are thri- are thriving and they're begging for help. They're, they're so it, it, if you if we can quit fighting losing the old. And embrace the new a lot of times, and look at it as growth versus loss. Uh, you know, I, I, I've argued with people for it. You know, said, so, well, you know, all the people that are going to be laid off from Dollar Tree, and I'm like, well, maybe they'll improve it. But they're making nine dollars an hour at Dollar Tree. Hopefully, they can move on. Mm. Hopefully, we're able to move on from that mm. and, and use that as a springboard versus I'm losing Dollar Tree. I'm getting rid of a nine dollar an hour job. There's, there's a guy down the street hiring for twelve dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, well, it does kind of come home at that point, doesn't it? Because yeah. for the person who is, and, and I'm in that position right now, you know, for the person who is is trying to deal with the stresses of, of everyday survival and trying to figure out, okay, well, yeah, all these great things are happening on a global scale, but I got to deal with me. I got to deal with the fact that I don't have a job right now, or I don't have a career, or I don't have this, or I don't have that. And when you're in that mindset because, you know, the money isn't coming in or not enough money is coming in or whatever, it's a tough mindset because that's all you can see. You can't really see this global thing going on. You know I mean, maybe you can see it kind of abstractly, but it has no meaning for you because you, what really has meaning is I got to be able to, you know, feed my family. I got to be able to put a roof over our heads. I got to be able to clothe everybody. I got to be able to provide the basics. That's that's where the right. that that's where the rubber meets the road, really. Yes, and and that's where the fear comes in. That's where. You know, when you look at your security, and when you look at, 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 at that, the, my, one of my words that I I love to use, try to use it at least once a week, uh, <laughs> is when you are in the mindset of awfulizing. Yes. You take every event versus okay, I'm in panic mode because I lost my job. Uh, I this or I'm, I'm in panic mode. I'm I'm not going to be able to feed my kids. We're going to be homeless. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, and you get into a depression, you get stress built type thing versus what growth opportunities here? I needed a kick in the butt. I needed to move forward. No, I, I know of no one who has done great things that didn't come from a place of fear to start. Mm. Now, it doesn't mean they stay in fear, right. but it starts with, I got to go take this chance. I can't because nobody leaves the safety. I, I, I work with, you know, my clientele is, uh, usually, uh, wealthy upper middle class people uh and and so a lot of them have been in traditional employment like uh uh you know they go to work for a, a massive company dominion power is a big company here mm-hmm. in virginia yep. and they're headquartered here in richmond so i know a lot of people that are high up in dominion power mm-hmm. well one man has been with them for 30 years he made incredible money he's one of their vice presidents 
and he retired. He hated the job. He feels like he, you know, other than an incredible income and a great retirement, but now he's using the money to go stuff and, and, and go do stuff that he he could do with before he always wanted to do, but he, he didn't do it because of fear of being able to provide for his family. He's now even making more money doing what he was doing, what he should have been doing 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's like, see, I, I, I wasted 10 years in that company, but I was too scared to leave the comfort oh, zone yeah. of Dominion Power. Right. And, and so comfort zones are a nice place to visit, as we often say, and they're almost always debilitating in the end because they, you know, we, you know, you, you probably have examples of, of fearing leaving the comfort zone. I've had examples oh, of absolutely. fearing leaving the comfort zone yeah. years ago. Oh, and, yeah. and, and so when you do that, we recognize it. It's easy to say, oh, don't do it, but it's such a, a, a such a loss when we, you know, I look at, at the gift of being pushed out of your comfort zone. It's very uncomfortable, mm-hmm. but it is amazing when you, uh, you look at that, you know. Let's get to uh, another extreme, too, because all the examples we've been discussing are here in the United States, which is you know, pretty much globally recognized as, a, as the land of opportunity. It still is. And you know, there's just there are, there are plenty of opportunities, all kinds of them. You just have to be willing to do what it takes to take advantage of them. But there are also people, and I'm going to really go to extreme here. There are people, there are women, for instance, who live in in uh, some of the countries that have you know, great degrees of poverty or oppression or something like that. You know, places like uh, you know, Somalia or Afghanistan, Pakistan, um, some of the other African nations. I mean, that are just in really, really bad situations because women usually don't even get the the fair shake anyway, just because they're women. And then add in the fact that they're in a war zone or they're in a uh, a society that has tremendous economic um, deprived uh, experiences and so forth. How does somebody like that reconcile it? They don't have the experience of, of living in the United States where they have uh, you know, all these different jobs available and so forth. So what do you do if you're in that kind of extreme extreme situation? Well, and, and, and I, I, I think so much along the way that, that sort of like you're talking about the, when, you, when you identify it, it Every situation is unique, and, and we do have a, a perspective in the United States, and I do feel it's easier to get this stuff accomplished a lot right. of times. Yeah. However, we do. We are talking about the World Wide Web. I know people that – the lady in China who did the name thing. Oh, yeah. She's making half a million dollars. I mean, so uh, if you can do it in China, you can do it anywhere. And, mm-hmm. and it's just it, – it's the same – the same concept, but you, since we do have access to every, I, I know people that are, are this is a great example. Uh, people in uh, India, for example, are often customer service reps for United States companies. Well, I also know of there's facilities in India that work hard, and, you know, a lot of them know English, they work, that, that train people to help reduce their accent. And, mm, and help right. them become more fluid and conversate. So there's a cottage industry supporting that just alone in India, mm-hmm. you know, where you see there's people learning English to speak it at a higher level, higher conversational value. And, and so there's people training them. So there's a demand to learn English at a higher level. True. Um, it, 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 if you, there, there's companies in Russia that are, uh, you know, very much into organic food. And, and, and so the, the, the idea that they now they have access to the World Web, they're becoming a big producer of high quality organic fermented foods yeah. uh, that are very popular and very healthy. So, so everywhere, even now that you have access to another, our country like North Korea, where you, you have such a tight governmental stronghold. And the, the people have literally been brainwashed, but oh, yeah. unfortunately, that brain that brainwashing is still part of the law of attraction. Mm-hmm. And so, while they're truly believing all that's going on, they're they're attracting what they're being, and that's very sad. Mm-hmm. There's not free thought allowed. Um, but it, it, with it, those countries, we can again focus on that country, or look at all the countries that have a very open mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. And I would even submit that in North Korea. Uh, obviously, we know very, very little about what goes on inside that country by design. They don't want us to know what's going on. And yet, every once in a while, we get little tiny glimpses of what's going on. You know, somebody will escape the country. There was there was one particular case, I don't know, within the last couple of years. I can't remember exactly when it was, 
where one of the military officers um, basically ran across the, the DMZ and did so successfully without being shot down. And he's now uh, basically lecturing and, and sharing information. He shared information with governments. He's written books. He's, he's given talks explaining what's going on uh, back in his home country and how terrible the conditions are and so forth. Uh, and and so that's where we get a lot of our stuff about, oh, how terrible it will be in a country like that. But by the same token, y- y- you kind of have to read it between the lines, but a lot of what he's talking about suggests that discontent is starting to bubble up within the country, that people, even though they are completely cut off from the rest of the world and really not recognizing what's going on, there's just enough information trickling in that the discontent is starting to really bubble up. And no one knows exactly how all of that's going to iron out, but we know from past experience with other countries, you get that, that discontent bubbling up, it's going to overflow in some way. I mean, the, the classic yeah. example, I guess, would be the Soviet Union when it collapsed in, what was it, 1989, whatever it was, uh, that the, year, that the, uh, the walls came down. It, it was unpredictable. No one knew it was going to happen, and then it happened. And I was like, whoa, what just happened? You know, all because some discontent just started to bubble up. So that, that kind of ties into what you're talking about. You start from a place of, of really struggling. And if you're, if you're dreaming, your desire gets strong enough because of that struggle, it turns into this, what Abraham calls this mass rocket of desire. And all of a sudden, law of attraction kicks in and starts shifting things, even in the most dire situation. Yes. And that's the beauty of it. That's, that's where, That's our wheelhouse. That's the powerhouse of this concept that you have. You know, we all have within us a a desire. Sometimes the desire is created by a lack. A lack can be a positive in the beginning, Mm -hmm. as long as you don't stay in the lack. The desire to get better, the desire to prove, you know, the the desire to, for Tesla to be, uh, the Tesla company, Elon Musk, to create such what seemingly impossible things is, is, is just brilliant, but it's driven by a desire for more, a desire to, to break the boundaries. And, and, and so the, the, everything can happen for a positive. Uh, there are people that cure cancer because, and, and by no means, let me give a disclaimer, I'm not suggesting cancer is a good thing. Right. Or no, but I know researchers that have, their children have died of a certain type of cancer. I know a lady, I wish I could remember her name, she was 35 years old. She went back to school, got her doctorate, and, and actually cured the cancer that killed her son. Wow. Wow. Now, that doesn't mean her son's loss was a positive. It's clearly not. Right. Having lost a son, I, I never can make that. But, but what she took from that, it drove her to go fix this problem. Yeah. And and you you see that. John Walsh, we talked about him before the program. Years ago, his son Adam was horribly abused and murdered. Mm -hmm. That led him to create a foundation. This man single-handedly changed the laws of of our country and how we look at child abusers. Right. And and created, because of him, they created where everybody has to be fingerprinted and registered. Walmart, we talked about them earlier, they, they have a thing called Code Adam, that was John Walsh's son's name, that if there's a child missing or reported missing in their store, all the doors are locked. Employees guard the exits and the police are called until that child's found. John Walsh did that yeah. in response to his son. I would venture to say, I don't know of another soul that has done more to save children from predators than John Walsh. Mm. And the interesting thing is the average American never heard of him. <laughs> when you understood that, now, that doesn't mean that John Walsh's son dying was a positive. I'm sure John right. Walsh had the option. I'd rather not have done all that stuff if my son could be with me. Absolutely. However, here's where, that's life. That's how we take things. That The growth mindset is growing. No matter what happens to us or where we're at, a growth mindset can get us to that next level. And if it's if if if, if you're sitting in a, a shack in I don't know in, in in some Nepal somewhere and it, but you have an internet connection you have access to the entire world's knowledge at your disposal. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. enough translating stuff free if you find it online. You don't have to speak a word of English 
to have free translation from your language to English. You have all this information available to you. Yeah, that's true. And and I think that's where we can kind of summarize what we've been talking about here. We would because we, the whole conversation was essentially around the idea that we have these things that we love, the the the, the, the loves of our lives, and how do we make a, a living doing what we love? And and those who do uh, find what they love and they find a way to get a job, they, they do extraordinarily well. And those who are living in in you know, dire situations. Even in those situations, there are opportunities to uh, to kind of explode the situation. I mean, to the point where walls come down. All of that happening because of the law of attraction. So, the, the original question I, I I don't remember exactly how I raised the question, but the original question is, well, what do you do about the things that you love? The answer is you you, you look to the law of attraction because the law of attraction is going to be your way out, whatever your circumstances, no matter how bad it is, which is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, certainly, and, and and I I I, you know what what I'm wanting to derive from all this, what I'm wanting to go with all this is is the law of attraction will allow great growth or it will support regression mm-hmm. because it doesn't it is not about any one direction. It's what you're feeling. It's what you're vibrating, and the mindset controls this. So the excitement out there is we have the access to this. At the same time, the scary part is we have access, have access to, to this. this. You're right. The same answer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's it in a nutshell. Hey, we've got uh, just a couple minutes left. I want to make sure I remind people, look at the great programming you're getting here. It's always different. Every single episode of the show is different. We do 10 of them a week, and they're still all different. You don't want to miss any of them because they're just absolutely jam-packed with fantastic information and entertainment and, and just having a good time and feeling good. So make sure you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, go to the home page of our website at LOAToday.net, and you will find at the top of the page, there's a nice great big icon there with text that says click here to link in and, and, and subscribe using your device. It's even says so that it will detect what your device is. And that way, if you're hooking it with an iPhone, the iPhone link is right there. If you're hooking it with an Android phone, the Android link is right there. It's just, you know, it's it's that simple. Then you just walk through the process automatically, take the default settings, and just like that, you're a subscriber to LOA Today. And then once you're subscribing, make sure that you're sharing that fact each time that you listen to one of these episodes that you love so much so that other people can find it as well. And that's how we spread the word and help more and more people get their daily dose of happy. And Joel, I mean, I got to say it for the umpteenth time, you were one of the most amazing coaches I've ever run into, just from the commentary you give us on the show. Tell people how they can reach out to you and and learn more about you and learn about your services and maybe just even talk to you. Yeah, my website is joelelston.com, and my email is joelelston at gmail. Uh, Either way is an effective way to get me. I, I love hearing from our audience. I hear from them often. Uh, I always try to return calls or return emails. Uh, maybe not the same day, but I, I usually <laughs> will get to them. So I always try to make that an effort. Yeah, and that's a good point. That's true for all of our life coaches and all of my co-hosts. That, uh, that You can't always say they're going to be able to respond right away, but they will respond. I don't think there's a single one of them that won't respond, and, and you're certainly one of the leaders of that. So thank you for that. So, Joel, this has been great as usual. I mean, the only sad part for me is, I mean, we still only get to do it once a week. I wish we could do it more, but I'm glad that I get once a week with you. So thank you for that. Well, and, and to even compound that further is next Thursday, I won't be on the show. That's I'll right. Be sitting on a bench in Florida. You are, yeah. So we're going to put up with, with having no Joel. We're going to be Joel free for two weeks. I don't know if I can stand the strain of that. So you're going to have to come back. I think we can pull through. (laughs) (laughs) Have a great time on your trip to Florida. We hope that you you and and your son really enjoy the trip to Santa Maria Island and and, get get all the benefits that you get out of it. So have fun with that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And to all of our listeners and subscribers, thank you for listening as well, live stream and podcast as well. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. 